She's a Marxist. Everybody knows she's oh, a Marxist. Oh, no. Execute the baby. He has Ooh. a certain view, but Did I think he's speaking Did she just backstab his really VP didn't. on stage? Look, Would you veto? Yes, make him answer it. Yes. People start leaving his rallies early. And I will tell you the one thing. We have the biggest rallies, the most incredible the rallies biggest in the rallies? history of politics. That's because they're eating the dog, <laughs> the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating. Oh, it's a value that oh, I that bring to my sick. work. Ah. To say we, God, he's so triggered. Is, now she wants to do transgender operations on illegal aliens that are in prison. <laughs> this is a rat. By the way, I'm a big fan of solar. But they take <laughs> Ashley Babbitt was shot by an out of control police officer <laughs> that should have what? never. What does that mean? We still do not have a plan. I have concepts of a plan. <laughs> that we have a shortage of, of homes and housing. And the cost of housing is too expensive for far too many people. We know that young families need support to raise their children, and I intend on extending a tax cut for those families of $6,000, which is the largest child tax credit that we have given in a long time, so that those young families can afford to buy a crib, buy a car seat, buy clothes for their children. My passion, one of them, is small businesses. My plan is to give a $50,000 tax deduction to start up small businesses, knowing they are part of the backbone of America's economy. My opponent, on the other hand, his plan is to do what he has done before, tax which is to rich. provide a tax cut for billionaires and big corporations, which will result in $5 trillion to America's deficit. My opponent has a plan that I call the Trump's sales tax, which would be a 20% tax on everyday goods that you rely on to get through the month. Yo, I am watching this. That that uh, we're doing tariffs on other countries. Other countries are going to finally, after... Please China, ask him what a tariff is. Fact, Please. They never took the tariff off because it was so much money they can't. I created one of the greatest economies in the history of our country. I'll do it again and even better. We are going to get to immigration and border <laughs> okay. security during this debate. Right, but, okay. uh, Donald Trump has no plan for you. And when you look at his economic plan, it's all about tax breaks for the richest people. What the Wharton School has said is Donald Trump's plan would actually explode the deficit. 16 Nobel laureates have described his economic plan as something that would increase inflation and by the middle of next year would invite a recession. You just have to look at where we are and where we stand on the issues. And I'd invite you to know that Donald Trump actually has no plan for you because he is more interested in defending himself than he is in looking out for you. That's just a sound bite. They gave her that to say. Look, I went to the Wharton <laughs> School of Finance, and many of those professors, the top professors, think my plan is a brilliant plan. It's a great many plan. It's a plan that's going to bring up our, our worth, our value as a country. It's going to make people want to be able to go and work and uh, create jobs and create a lot of good, solid money for our, com for our country. <laughs> and just to finish off, uh, she doesn't have good, a plan. Good, solid money. She copied Biden's plan, and it's like four sentences like run, spot, run, four sentences that are just, <laughs> oh, we'll try and lower taxes. She doesn't have a plan. Take a look at her plan. She doesn't have a plan. Mr. Respond. President, I do we want to drill to... down on something you both brought up. Uh, the vice president brought up uh, your tariffs. You responded, and let's drill down on this. Because she needs to ask. Your yeah, drill, plan drill. is what she calls drill down. essentially a national sales tax. Drill down. Calls for tariffs, what is a tariff? Here, ask him, what is a tariff? Foreign imports Can you explain what a tariff is? You recently said that you might double your plan, imposing him, tariffs up to 20% on please, goods coming into God, this country. Ask. Do you believe Americans can afford higher prices because of tariffs? Ask. They're not going to have higher prices. Ask What's him what a tariff is. Who's going to have higher prices is China and all all of the countries that have been ripping us off for years. I charge, I was the only president ever. China oh. was paying us hundreds of billions of dollars and so were other countries. She's a Marxist. Everybody knows she's oh, a Marxist. Oh no. Her father's a Marxist professor in economics and he taught her well. Does she give a, has he given a single, the issue he hasn't abortion. given a single president positive Trump policy I think on anything yet, has he? To kill Roe v. Wade. But the governor before, he said, the baby will be born, and we will decide what to do with the baby. In other words, we'll execute the baby. And that's <laughs> Not why the I did executed. that, because that predominates. Not the because they're radical. baby executions. The Democrats are radical in that. Oh, no. And her vice presidential pick, which I think was a horrible pick, by the way, for our country, because he is really out of it. But her vice presidential pick says, abortion in the ninth month. 
is absolutely fine. He also says execution after birth. It's execution, no longer abortion, because the baby is born is okay. And that's not okay with me. Donald Trump hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade. And they did exactly as he intended. And now in over 20 states, there are Trump abortion bans, which make it criminal for a doctor or nurse to provide health care. In one state, it provides prison for life. Trump abortion bans that make no exception even for rape and incest, which understand what that means. A survivor of a crime of violation to their body does not have the right to make a decision about what happens to their body next. That is immoral. And one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree. The government, and Donald Trump certainly, should not be telling a woman what to do with her body. I have talked with women around our country. You want to talk about this is what people wanted? Pregnant women who want to carry a pregnancy to term, suffering from a miscarriage, being denied care in an emergency room because the health care providers are afraid they might go to jail and she's bleeding out in a car in the parking lot? She didn't want that. Her husband didn't want that. A 12 or 13 year old survivor of incest being forced to carry a pregnancy you to gotta term. You got to get off this topic. They oh, don't man. Want that. Not the abortion one. <laughs> and I Not pledge good. to you. When Congress passes <laughs> a, a good bill topic for to put back in place the, the protections of Roe v. Wade, as President of the United States, I will proudly sign it into law. But understand, if Donald Trump were to be reelected, he will sign a national abortion ban. Understand, in his Project 2025, there would be a national abortion a monitor that would be monitoring your pregnancies, your miscarriages. I think the American people believe that certain freedoms in particular, the freedom to make decisions about one's own body should not be made by the government. Well, Thank you, Vice President, President Harris. Well, there uh, she goes again. It's a lie. I'm not signing a ban, and there's no reason to sign a ban, because we've gotten what everybody wanted, Democrats, Republicans, and everybody else, and every legal scholar wanted it to be brought back into the states. And the states are voting, and it may take a little time, but for 52 years, this issue has torn our country apart, and they've wanted it back in the states. And I did something that nobody thought was possible. The states are now voting. What she says is an absolute lie. And as far as the abortion ban, no, I'm not in favor of abortion ban, but it doesn't matter because this issue has now been taken over by the states. Would you veto a na national abortion ban? If it well, I won't desk? have to because again, you won't answer. Make him answer. Make him answer. Make him answer. One, make him answer that. Congress, make him answer. It's impossible for her to get the vote, uh, especially now with the 50-50 and essentially 50-50 in both Senate and the House. She's not going to get the vote. She can't get the vote. She won't even come close to it. So it's just talk. You know what it reminds me of when they said they're going to get student loans uh, terminated and it ended up being a total catastrophe. The student loans and then her, I, I think probably her boss, if you call him a boss, he spends all his time on the beach. But look, her boss went out and said, we'll do it again. We'll do it a different way. And he went out, got rejected again by the Supreme Court. So all these students got uh, taunted with this whole thing about this whole idea and how unfair that would have been part of the reason they lost to the millions and millions of people that had to pay off their student loans. They didn't get it for free, but they were saying it's the same way that they talked about that, that they talk about abortion. But if I could just get a yes or yes, no, because thank your running you. mate, Jen J.D. Vance, has said that you would veto it if it did come to your desk. Well, I didn't discuss it with uh, J.D. in all fairness. Uh, J.D., uh, and I, I don't mind if he has Ooh. a certain view, but did I think he's Did she just backstab me, his VP really on stage? Look, we don't have to discuss it because she'd never be able to get it, just like she couldn't get student Make him loans. answer the they question. Cut loans. him off. They come close to getting student loans. They taunted young people and a lot of other people that had loans. They can never get this approved. So it doesn't matter what she says about going to Congress. Well, wonderful. Let's go to Congress. Do it. But the fact is that for years they wanted to get it out of Congress and out of the...
the federal government. And we did something that everybody said could be done. Make him answer. And now you have a vote Make of him the answer. people on abortion. Vice President Harris, I want to give you your time to respond, uh, but I do want to ask, would you support any restrictions on a woman's right to an abortion? I absolutely support reinstating the protections of Roe v. Wade. And as you rightly mentioned, nowhere in America is a woman carrying a pregnancy to term and, and, and asking for an abortion. That is not happening. It's insulting to the women of America. And understand what has been happening under Donald Trump's abortion bans. Couples who pray and, 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 and dream of having a family are being denied IVF treatments. What is happening in our country? Working people, working women, who are working one or two jobs, who can barely afford childcare as it is, have to travel to another state to get on a plane sitting next to strangers to go and get the health care she needs. Not the strangers on the barely plane. Can afford oh, to no. do it. And what you are putting her through is unconscionable. And the people of America have not, the, the majority of Americans believe in a woman's right to make decisions about her own body. And that is why in every state where this issue has been on the ballot, in red and blue states both, the people of America have voted for freedom. Vice President Harris, Excuse me, I have you. to respond. Another lie. It's another lie. I have been a leader on IVF, which, which is fertilization. The IVF, I have been a leader. In fact, when they got a very negative decision on IVF from the Alabama courts, I saw the people of Alabama and the legislature two days later voted it in. I've been a leader on it. <laughs> what they does that have to that do with you? Everybody else knows it. <laughs> I have been a leader on fertilization, IVF. Wait, and the what? Other thing, they, Is he Alabama? You should ask. Will she allow abortion in the eighth month, ninth month, seventh month? Come on. Okay, would you do that? That's an easy answer. Why don't you ask? It's between a woman and a doctor. That's the problem. Would you because veto? Under would you veto? Yes, make him answer. You yes, could, you could make him answer. Make him answer. In the seventh month, the eighth make month. Him make him answer, and then you'll answer. Make him answer. Make him answer, and then you'll answer. Just look at the governor, former governor of, of Virginia. The governor of Virginia said we put the baby aside, and then we determine what we want to do with the baby. President Trump, thank you. We're going to turn now to immigration and border oh, security. We know it's an issue that's important to Republicans, Democrats, voters across the board uh, in this country. The people of our country actually need a leader who engages in solutions, who actually addresses the problems at hand. But what we have in the former president is someone who would prefer to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And I'll tell you something, he's going to talk about immigration a lot tonight, even when it's not the subject that is being raised. <laughs> and I'm going to actually do something really unusual, and I'm going to invite you to attend one of Donald Trump's rallies, because it's a really interesting thing to watch. You will see during the course of his rallies, he talks about... Oh, be careful with this one. Oh, man. <laughs> ...about fictional characters like Hannibal Lecter. Okay. He will talk about windmills cause cancer. And what you will also notice okay. is that people start leaving his rallies early out of exhaustion and boredom. <laughs> and I will tell you, the one thing you will not hear him talk about is you. You will not hear him talk about your needs, your dreams, and your, need, and your desires. Good memes. And I'll tell you, I Good believe memes. you deserve a president who actually puts you first. And I pledge to you that I will. Vice President Harris, thank you. President Trump, on that point, I want to get your response. Well, I would like to respond. Let me just ask, though, why did you try to kill that bill, and successfully so? That would have put thousands of additional agents and officers on the border. First, let me respond as to the Please. rallies. She <laughs> said people start leaving. People don't go to her rallies. She has to do personal attacks like this the whole time. She needs to say he has small hands. He will respond. He'll take the bait every time. Rallies. There's no reason she to She needs go. to have one and of these at the, the end of every answer. Go, she's busing him in and paying them to be there and then showing them in a different light. So she can't talk about that. People don't leave my rallies. We have the biggest rallies, the most incredible <laughs> the rallies biggest in the rallies? history of politics. That's because Just people one of these at the end of every back. answer. Our He'll country lose his is mind. being lost. It'll be We're over. a failing nation. And it happened three and a half years ago. And what, what's going on here, you're going to end up in World War III, just to go into another subject. What they have done to our country by allowing these millions and millions of people to come into our country and look at what's happening to the towns all over the United States. And a lot of towns don't want to talk. It's not going to be Aurora or Springfield. A lot of towns don't want to talk about it because they're so embarrassed by it. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, <laughs> the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets 
of the people that live there. <laughs> and this is what's happening. This is our ex-president, by the way. And it's a shame. As far oh, as my God. rallies are concerned, as far as the reason they go is they like what I say. They <laughs> back to the rallies. He back. has to go they back. They want to make America great again. It's a very simple phrase. Make America great again. She's destroying this country, it's, and if she becomes she can president, psychologically this country destroy doesn't have him. a chance of success. Not only success, will end up being subs. Venezuela on steroids. I just want to clarify here. You bring up Springfield, uh, Ohio, and, and ABC She's got to keep hitting on these. This is what I'm talking about. There. This is the uh, personal. A few of these, and he's no done. He's over. Specific claims of pets being she, if she calls harmed, him, injured, or abused. If Kamala Harris calls Donald Trump a loser on stage, he will call her the N-word. Guaranteed. That's my promise to you as an American tonight. That will absolutely happen. By individuals within the immigrant community. Well, I've seen people on television. Let me just say here. This is the people on television saying my dog was taken and used for food. So maybe he's the that. people on television. For a city manager. I'm not taking this from television. But the people on television saying my dog was eaten by the people that went there. Again, the Springfield City Manager says there's no evidence of that. Vice we'll President Harris, I'll let you respond to the rest of what <laughs> We won't. <laughs> you talk about extreme. <laughs> um, you oh know, my I, God, he's so triggered. This is, I think, one of the reasons why in this election, I actually have the endorsement of 200 Republicans who have formally worked with President Bush, Mitt Romney, and John McCain, including the endorsement of former Vice President Dick Cheney and Congress member Liz Cheney. And if you want to really know the inside track Ooh, on who hates the former president is, hates if he didn't her. make it clear already, just ask people who have worked yes, with him. Yes, like his vice president. His former chief of staff, a four-star general, yep. has said he has contempt for the Constitution of the United States. Ooh. His former national security advisor has said he is dangerous and unfit. His former Secretary of Defense has said the nation, the Republic, would never survive another Trump term. And when we listen to this kind of rhetoric, when the issues that affect the American people are not being addressed, I think the choice is clear in this election. President Trump, Call him a loser. Give you a minute to respond. Uh, uh, thank you, because when I hear that, see, I know I'm, I'm a different doing... kind of a person. I fired <laughs> most of those people. Not so graciously. They did bad things or a bad job. I fired them. You they hired them fired too. One person. They didn't oh. fire anybody having to do with Afghanistan and the Taliban and the 13 people who's, who's were just killed viciously and violently. He doesn't even know what happened. Know Ask him what family. happened. Ask him what happened. They they Who killed them? Ask him. He doesn't know the answer. He doesn't know. He doesn't know what he he might think the Taliban killed. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. That was one of the most incompetently handled situations anybody has ever seen. So when somebody does a bad job, I fire him. And you take a guy like Esper. He was no good. I fired him. So he writes a book. Another one writes a book because with me they can write books. With nobody else can they? But. They have done such a poor job, and they never fire anybody. Look at the economy. Look, how, look at the inflation. They didn't fire any of their economists. They have the same people. That's a good way not to have books written about you. But just to finish, <laughs> I got more votes not than any books? Republican in history by far. In fact, I got more votes than any president, sitting president, in history by far. Let me continue on immigration. It was what you wanted to talk about earlier. So let's get back to your deportation uh, uh, proposal that the vice president has reacted to as well. Uh, president Why Trump, does he get the, does he get the last word on everything? the domestic deportation operation in the history of our country. You say you would use the National Guard. You say if things get out of control, you'd have uh, no problem using the U.S. With military. Local police, yes. uh, you also said you would use local police. Uh, how would you uh, deport 11 million could you, undocumented? Could you imagine if she dropped the like... I feel like Joe's easier to listen to than this guy. I feel like he makes more sense than Donald does over here. He would lose his mind. She just needs one more of these. Just one, just one good one like that, and it's over. Immigrants, I know you. Frankly, the American people are exhausted with this same old tired playbook. Vice President, you Harris, need to insult them. Excuse me. Every one of those cases was started by them against their political opponent, and I'm winning most of them, and I will win the rest on appeal. And you saw that with the decision that them. came down just recently from lost the Supreme Court. A big I'm one in New York. But those are cases. It's lost called his, weaponization. A lot of the civil Never cases as well. in this country. They weaponized the Justice Department. Every one of those cases was involved with the DOJ, from Atlanta and Fawny Willis to, to the uh, Attorney General of New York and the DA in New York. Every one of those cases. And then they say, oh, he was he's a criminal. They're the ones that 
made them go after me. By the way, Joe Biden was found essentially guilty on the documents case. And what happened in my documents <laughs> he didn't, case? He wasn't even charged they with said, a crime. Oh, that's the toughest of them all. <laughs> a complete and total victory. Two months ago, it victory? was thrown out. It's weaponization, and they used it, and it's never happened in this country. They used it to try and win an election. President They're Trump. fake cases. President Trump, thank you. A really quick response here, Vice President Harris, on this notion of weaponization of the Justice Department. Well, let's talk about let's extreme. Let's talk about it. And understand the context in which this election in 2024 is taking place. The United States Supreme Court recently ruled that the former president would essentially be immune from any misconduct if he were to enter the White House again. Understand, this is someone who has openly said he would terminate, I'm quoting, terminate the Constitution, the on Constitution day one. of the United yep. States. Oh, that he would weaponize he did say that. the Department of Justice he did against say that. his political yeah. enemies. Someone who has openly expressed disdain for members of our military. Understand what it would mean if Donald Trump were back in the White House with no guardrails because certainly we know now the court won't stop him we know jd vance is not going to stop him true true it's up to the american people vice president to stop harris him. thank you Lindsay. vice president harris in your last run for president this is the one that weaponized no excuse me moderator shut the f up donald trump is speaking he will always have the last word not kamala me. needs to fight she for the weaponized. last word here i probably took a bullet to the head because of the things that they say <laughs> about the me head, they talk about Democracy. I'm a threat to democracy. They're the threat to democracy with a fake Trump. Russia, Russia, Russia investigation. We do a lot to Russia, Russia, Russia. To get to. Lindsay? Vice President Harris, in your last run for president, you said you wanted she to She needs to start tracking. fighting for the yeah, last word. She can't give those up. As it relates to my values, let me tell you, I grew up a middle class kid raised by a hardworking mother. With coconut trees outside. Who worked and saved and was able to buy our first home when I was a teenager. The values I bring to the importance of home ownership, knowing not everybody got handed. $400 million on a silver platter and then Ooh, filed bankruptcy. Six there we go. Oh, is a value that I bring to my sick. work to say we That's are all I wanted. Thank you. Work with the private That's sector all I wanted. and home Thank you. to increase 3 million homes, increase by 3 million homes by the end of my first term. Those are actually my good decisions. He's going to say that. Related to he will respond and say those bankruptcies, those were actually really good decisions. He will say that in his response. He'll say it was, was a school good school business watch. He will do it. By her stepfather. But I was given a fraction of that, a tiny fraction, <laughs> and I built it into many, many billions of dollars. Many, many billions. Many, many billions. And when people see it, they are even surprised. <laughs> so we don't have to talk about that. Fracking? She's been against it for 12 years. Uh, defund the police. She's been against that forever. She gave all that stuff up. She was big on defund the police. In Minnesota, she went out. Wait a minute. I'm talking now. If you don't mind, please. Oh, he did the thing. Does I'm talking now. <laughs> she went out. He wants, to, he wants to say it. She went out. Oh, my God. In Minnesota. He's so rattled. He's got that N word. That it's loaded up. Oh, my God. I want to see. He's got to do it. It's got to happen. Out and raise money to he get was him so out of close jail. to it. She did things that nobody would ever think of. Now she wants to do transgender operations on illegal aliens that are in prison. <laughs> this is a radical what? left liberal. Not the, tr not the transgender operations on illegals in prison. Not that. Oh, God. If she won the election, <laughs> fracking in Pennsylvania will end on day one. Just to finish one yeah. thing, so important in my opinion. So I got the oil business going like nobody has ever done before. But if she won the election, the day after that election, They'll go back to destroying our country and oil will be dead. Fossil fuel will be dead. We'll go back to windmills and we'll go back to solar where they need a whole desert to get some energy to come out. Of. You ever see a solar plant? By the way, I'm a big fan of solar. But they take <laughs> you just shit on it. 400, 500 <laughs> acres of desert President soil. Trump, it's desert. <laughs> what else are they going to do with it, Trump? <laughs> what, a plant of forest? We have an election in just 56 days. And I want to talk about the peace. Kamala needs to get in there. Why didn't she? She needs to fight for the last word on that. What the f***? How could you let him? That's funny. She should have said something there. That was a funny answer. Uh, Mr. President, on January 6th, you told your supporters to march to the Capitol. You said you would be right there with them. Uh, the country and the world saw what played out of the Capitol that day. The officers coming under attack. Aides in the West Wing say you watched it unfold on television off the Oval Office. Uh, you did send out tweets, but it was more than two hours before you sent out that video message. Uh, three, telling your supporters three, to go home. three Is hours. Is anything you regret about what you did on that day? You just said a thing that isn't covered. Peacefully and patriotically, I said during my speech, not later on. Peacefully and patriotically. 
and nobody on the other side was killed. Ashley Babbitt was shot by an out of control police officer <laughs> that should have what? never, ever shot her. It's a disgrace. But we didn't do this group of people that have been treated so badly. It was Antifa. Ask, Is he going to try to squeeze all the people that are pouring into our country and killing people that she allowed to pour in? She was the border czar. Remember that? Oh, back to immigration. She was back the to immigration. Czar. She doesn't want to be called the border czar because she's embarrassed by the border. In fact, she said at the beginning, "Well, I'm surprised you're not talking about the border yet." That's because she knows what a bad job they've done. But let me just ask you. You might ask her that question. You were the president. You were watching an unfold on television. It's a very simple question as we move forward toward another election. Is there anything you regret about what you did on that day? No. Yes, I had nothing Illegal to immigration. do with that other than they asked me to make a speech. I showed up for a speech. I said, I think it's going to be big. I wasn't responsible for security. Nancy Pelosi what? was responsible. She didn't Dude, do That's not job. the chain of command. The Ask about the chain about of command. Is. president, not about former Speaker Pelosi. But I do want Vice President Harris to respond here. I was at the Capitol on January 6th. I was the vice president-elect. I was also an acting senator. I was there. And on oh, that and I day, walked by a pipe bomb 20 feet away from me. United pipe States bomb 20 feet away. A violent mob. Yep. To attack our nation's capital. To desecrate our nation's capital. On that day, 140 law enforcement officers were injured. And some died. And understand, the... Former president has been indicted and impeached for exactly that reason. But this is not an isolated situation. Oh, he wants to say Let's that remember that. Charlottesville, where there was a mob of people carrying tiki torches, spewing anti-Semitic hate. Oh, she's going to do the... And what did... Trump the said that there were good people there. The this always riles up the conservatives. There were fine people on each Ooh, side. The Trumbles Let's really don't like this one. That when it came to the Proud Boys, a militia, the president said, the stand former back president said, stand, stand back and stand by. by. So for everyone watching who remembers what January 6th was, I say, we don't have to go back. Let's not go back. We're not going back. It's time to turn the page. And if that was a bridge too far for you, well, there is a place in our campaign for you to stand for country, to stand for our democracy, to stand for rule of law, and to end the chaos, and to end the approach that is about attacking the foundations of our democracy, because you don't like the outcome. And be clear, on that point, Donald Trump, the candidate, has said in this election there will be a bloodbath if this and the outcome of this election is not to his liking. Let's turn the page on this. Let's not go back. Let's chart a course for the future and not go backwards to the past. Let me just don't let him get the here. last word on this too. It was a different term and it was a term that related to energy because they have destroyed our energy business. That was where bloodbath was. Also, what? on Charlottesville, that story has been as you would say debunked. Laura Ingram, Sean Hannity, Jesse, all of these people, they covered it. If they go an extra sentence, they will see it was perfect. It was debunked in almost every newspaper, but they still bring it up, just like they bring 2025 up. They bring all of this stuff up. I ask you this, you talk about the Capitol. Why are we allowing these millions of people to come through on the southern border. How come she's not doing it here? And I'll tell you what I would do. I'm sorry. I have to rewind all this again. Let me tell you about the Capitol. Why are we letting all these people? Perfect. It was debunked in almost Hold every on. newspaper. Hold on. I got to hear that again. But they still bring it up, just like they bring 2025 up. They bring all of this stuff up. I ask you this. You talk about the Capitol. talk about the Capitol? Why are we allowing these millions of people to come through on the southern border? How come she's not doing anything? And I'll tell you what I would do, and I would be very proud to do it. I would say we would both leave this debate right now. I'd like to see her go down to Washington, D.C. during this debate, because we're wasting a lot of time. Go down to, because she's been so bad, it's so ridiculous. Go down to Washington, D.C. and let her sign a bill to close up the border, because they have the right to do it. They don't need bills. They have the right to do it. The president of the United States, you'll get him out of bed, you'll wake him up at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, you'll say, come on, come on down to the office, let's sign a bill. You got the last word again. I falsely claimed that you won, many times saying you won in a landslide. In the past couple of weeks leading up to this debate, uh, you have said, quote, you lost by a whisker, that you, quote, didn't quite make it, that you came up a little bit short. I are said you, that. Are you now acknowledging that you lost in 2020? No, I don't acknowledge that at all. But I you said did that say sarcastically. That. You but know those... that. It was said, oh, we lost by a whisker. <laughs> that was said sarcastically. 
Look, I don't acknowledge so proof. I All lost the last election it, and they should have sent it back to the legislatures for approval with the fake 75 million votes. The most votes any city they should just get arrested for this. Ever gotten. I was told that's if I it. Got Prison rot is what for the rest of your life. You can't be beaten. And we should just point out here as clarification, and you know this, uh, you and your allies, 60 cases in front of many judges. 63. Many the judge looked at it. And said they said no we didn't have standing. Fraud. Not true. And that's the other thing. What does standing mean, they Trump? What does standing mean? A technicality. On which technicality? Can you imagine a system where a person in an election doesn't have standing? The president of the United States doesn't have standing. That's how we lost. For what? Pre you mean a candidate, right? The pre Why would the president have standing? God, he's so stupid. If you look at the facts, and I'd love to he's have so you stupid. do a special on it. Donald Trump was fired by 81 million people. So let's be clear about that. And clearly he is having a very difficult <laughs> time processing that. But we <laughs> cannot afford to have a president of the United States who attempts, as he did in the past, to upend the will of the voters in a free and fair election. And I'm going to tell you that I have traveled the world as vice president of the United States, and world leaders are laughing at Donald Trump. Oh, he doesn't with like that one. Leaders, oh, no. Some of whom work with you, and they say you're a disgrace. And when you then talk in this way in a presidential debate and deny what over and over again are court cases you have lost True. because you did, in fact, lose that election. True. It leads one to believe that perhaps we do not have in the candidate to my right the temperament or, or the ability to not be confused about fact. That's deeply troubling, and the American people deserve better. I'll give you one minute to respond, Mr. President. Hey, let me just say about world leaders. Victor Orban, one of the most respected oh my men. God. They call him really? a strong man. He's a, he's a yeah, tough Yeah, Victor Orban, that's who you're going Smart. to? Are you going to say Putin Prime next? Prime Minister of Hungary. They said, why is the whole world blowing up? Three years ago it wasn't. Why is it blowing up? He said, because you need Trump back as president. We had no problems when Trump was president. No problem. The whole world was at peace. This pathetic man that you saw at a debate just a few months ago, that if he weren't in that debate, he'd be running instead of her. She got no votes. He got 14 million votes. What you did, you talk about a threat to democracy. He got 14 million votes and they threw him out of office. And you know what? I'll give you a little secret. He hates her. He can't stand her. <laughs> but Mr. he president. got 14 million votes. <laughs> they threw him out. And now she's running. I don't understand it, but Mr. I'm president, okay with it. We know you don't. Your time is I up. I think we're going to do very well. We've got a lot more to get. To. Turning now <laughs> yes. to the Israel-Hamas uh, war. How are you going to solve Israel-Palestine? Let's go. a terrorist organization slaughtered 1,200 Israelis, many of them young people who were simply attending a concert. Women were horribly raped. And so absolutely, I said then, I say now, Israel has a right to defend itself. We would. And how it does so matters. Because it is also true, far too many innocent Palestinians have been killed. Children, mothers. What we know is that this war must end. It must when end immediately. And the way it will end is we need a ceasefire deal and we need the hostages out. And so we will continue to work around the clock on that. Work around the clock, also understanding that we must chart a course for a two-state solution. And in that solution, there must be security for the Israeli people and Israel and an equal measure for the Palestinians. I oh, the believe day before, that okay. Israel will not exist within two years from now. And I've been pretty good at predictions, and I hope I'm wrong about that. Really? One. She hates Israel. At the same time, in her own way, she hates the Arab population. Because the <laughs> she whole them place is going to get blown Epic. up. Arabs, Jewish people, Christians. Israel. Israel will be gone. <laughs> it would have never happened. Iran was broke under Donald Trump. Now Iran has $300 billion because they took off all billion the sanctions they had. Iran had no money for Hamas or Hezbollah or any of the 28 different uh, spheres of terror, and they are spheres. <laughs> what of are terror. they? Name them. Horrible terror. <laughs> Name they them. They had no money. Vice President Harris, he says you hate Israel and I know Arabs. That's absolutely not true. I have my entire career and life supported Israel and the Israeli people. He knows that. He's trying to again divide and and distract. 
from the reality, which is it is very well known that Donald Trump is weak and wrong on national security and foreign weak. policy. It is well known that he weak. admires dictators, Ooh. wants to be a dictator on day one, according to himself. True. It is well known on truth that social. he said of Putin that he can do whatever the hell he wants and go into Ukraine. It is well known that he said when Russia went into Ukraine, it was brilliant. It is well known he exchanged love letters with Kim Jong-un. And it is absolutely well known that these dictators and autocrats are rooting for you to be president again because they're so clear. They can manipulate you with flattery <laughs> and favors. And that is why oh, so many military goodness. leaders who you have worked with have told me you are a disgrace Oh. That is why we understand that we have to have a president who is not consistently weak and wrong on Vice national president security, Harris. including the importance of upholding and respecting in highest regard our military. Vice President Harris, thank you. They're the ones Sorry, we need to give him the last word again. Because it, that's weak on national security by allowing every nation last month Immigrants. for the year, 168 different countries sending people into our country. Yes, the, every single country. Down. Putin endorsed her last week. All of the Said, I hope she wins. And I think he meant it. Oh because my what God. he's gotten away with is absolutely incredible. It wouldn't have happened with me. I've been in so many of these debates. It, the issue does come down to moderation, but there's absolutely no way to make the moderators actually hold the, the bad person accountable because, um, because, because they'll appear biased, right? Like even, even people, Ben Shapiro's out here tweeting that like, oh, it looks like the moderators are against Trump. You can't, Trump will never, I don't know if Trump has answered a single question. I don't think he's answered one. He hasn't given a single policy position besides tariffs. I don't think he knows what a tariff is. I genuinely don't, I think that Donald Trump thinks that a tariff is just like, you pay it in China to pay off the trade deficit, or so. I, I, I think I don't think he has. I don't think he knows what a tariff actually is. I don't think he answered a single question. So okay, yeah. I think he's gotten the last word on every single thing. I don't think he's given a single policy position besides tariffs. I don't think he's answered a single question. And yeah, I do notice he's avoided like all the bad nickname stuff. I think he's intentionally doing that because he's, he's trying not to look insanely unhinged, but it's really hard because I don't think he's used a single bad nickname this debate, which is kind of funny. How valuable is the last word? Um, I feel like the last word's pretty valuable, but I don't know. I don't know if he's, yeah, people are linking these poly market polls that this is real money, right? It's not like karma or something. Okay, this is real money? Yeah, geez. The mind read on Trump derailing future to, uh, topics to immigration was peak cinema. Yeah, she needs to keep bringing that up, though. She needs to keep saying, like, I told you he would do this, and he is doing it. Yeah. Doesn't she need to hit him back every time saying you blocked the border? Yeah. I, I can think of one huge help for Kamala Harris because I've heard her speak kind of casually. She has a way of speaking that she needs to change. Ask McBlast. Thanks for the 10 gifted subs. Um, I'm going to say this and then you retards are going to spam this over and over again because it's all you're going to hear. But too often when Kamala Harris is speaking, she's speaking like she's like, it, it, or at least the impression that I get, it sounds like she's looking for like future quotes. Like she's saying things with the idea that they're going to be quoted in the future or something, where she's trying to speak at way too profound a level at all points in time. I think it's good to punch these in. Like there are a couple of punchy lines that I actually like, um, like run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. I, like that's a good punchy line, you know? I, I think there are a couple punchy lines that are good to have, but I think that sometimes she's speaking like this so often, it's actually impeding her ability to just get like a real human, like there just needs to be like kind of a laugh and like some casual statements about how unhinged his behavior is. It, it does, we don't have to talk like we're being quoted in future history books at all points in time. Oh, America fired him. Donald Trump was fired by 81 million people. That's a good one, yeah. The labeling stuff is Trump stuff is also pretty funny, uh, right? Remember Obamacare? People like the ACA, they don't like Obamacare, calling it the, uh, the Trump abortion bans. Um, and then the Trump taxes, the Trump tax, wait, no, no, there were two things. It was the Trump abortion ban and the, was it the Trump sales tax? That's what she called it. Yeah. Those are good. I think those are good strategies. Yeah. I think for all, as much as I'm National railing on Trump, I think he's, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. he's like barely hanging on if you're a conservative, but you're probably not too happy right now. I think. Do you want Ukraine to win this war? I want the war to stop 
I will get it settled before I even become president. If I win, when I'm president, before I become I, president, what I'll do are you allowed I'll speak to, to do one, that? I'll speak to the other. I'll get them together. That war would have never happened. Wait, is that legal? <laughs> is that a crime? And, and in fact, what Wait, I are you saw allowed Putin to do that after I left, unfortunately <laughs> left because Does she um, know this? our country is I'm, gone I'm 99% to hell. sure this is but like not, left, you're not allowed to do this. Up soldiers, he did it after I left. Do you believe it's in the U.S. best interest for Ukraine to win this war, yes or no? I think it's the U.S. best interest to get this war finished. He's not going to answer. Make him answer. Oh, Make him answer. Make him answer. Cut his mic for the rest of the night until he answers the question. Human lives from being destroyed. I want to take this to Vice President Harris. I want to get your thoughts on uh, support for Ukraine in this moment. I believe the reason that Donald Trump okay. says that this war would be over within 24 hours is because he would just give it up. <laughs> True. And that's not who we are as Americans. True. Let's understand what happened here. Um, I actually met with Zelensky a few days before Russia invaded, tried through force to change territorial boundaries to defy one of the most important international rules and norms, which is the importance of sovereignty and territorial integrity. Yep. And I met with President Zelensky. I shared with him American intelligence about how he could defend himself. Days later, I went to NATO's eastern flank, to Poland and Romania. And through the work that I and others did, we brought 50 countries together to support Ukraine in its righteous defense. And because of our support, because of the air defense, the ammunition, the artillery, the javelins, the Abrams tanks that we have provided, Ukraine stands as an independent and free country. If Donald Trump were president, Putin would be sitting in Kyiv right now. And understand what that would mean, because Putin's agenda is not just about Ukraine. Understand why the European allies and our NATO allies are so thankful that you are no longer president and that we understand the importance of the greatest military alliance the world has ever known, which is NATO, and what we have done to preserve the ability of Zelensky and the Ukrainians to fight for their independence. Otherwise, Putin would be sitting in Kyiv with his eyes on the rest of Europe, starting with Poland. And why don't you tell the 800,000 Polish Americans right here in Pennsylvania how quickly you would give up for the sake of favor and what you think is a friendship with what is known to be a dictator who would eat you for lunch. <laughs> Vice President Harris, Oof. thank you. We've heard from both okay. of you on Ukraine tonight. Afghanistan came oh, up no, in the last No, excuse me. I need the last I word. Excuse me. Excuse me. Earlier, excuse me. Please. I have to respond. Excuse me. Oh, and he, and he gets the minute. would be sitting in Moscow, and he wouldn't have lost 300,000 men and women, but he would have been sitting in Moscow. Quiet, please. He would have been sitting in Moscow, much happier than he is right now, but eventually, you know, he's got a thing that other people don't have. He's got nuclear weapons. They don't ever talk about that. He's got nuclear weapons. Nobody ever thinks about that. <laughs> Nobody and thinks about eventually, that? eventually, uh, maybe he'll use them, and maybe he hasn't been that threatening. But he does have that, something we don't even like to talk about. Nobody likes to talk about it. But just so you understand, they sent her to negotiate peace before this war started. Three days later, he went in and he started the it war. It was Kamala's because fault? everything they said it was, was her weak fault? and stupid. They <laughs> said the wrong things. That war should have never started. She was the emissary. They sent her in to negotiate with Zelensky and Putin. And what? she did. And the war started three days later. And that's the kind of talent we have with her. She's worse than Biden. In I don't my think opinion, he knows. I think he's the worst president in the history of our country. She goes down as the worst vice president in the history of our country. But let me tell you something. She is a horrible negotiator. They sent her in to negotiate as soon as they left. Putin did the invasion. President Trump, thank you. You did bring up something. Kamala. You said she went to negotiate with Vladimir Excuse Putin. Excuse me. Vice President Harris, have you ever met Vladimir Putin? Can well, you clarify okay. tonight? Well, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, Yet okay. Again, I thank said you. it at the beginning of this debate. You're going to hear a bunch of lies coming from this fellow. Okay, remind that them. That's one. good. That's good. Good when reminder. Good reminder. I went to meet with President Zelensky, I've now met with him over five times. The reality is it has been about standing as America always should as a leader upholding international new rules and norms, as a leader who shows strength, understanding that the alliances we have around the world are dependent on our ability to look out for our friends and not favor our enemies because you adore strongmen instead of caring about democracy. 
true. And that is very much what is at stake here. Bring up Victor Orban. The president Orbit, bring of the United States is commander in Putin. chief. And the American people have a right to rely on a president who understands the significance of America's role and responsibility in terms of ensuring that there is stability and ensuring we stand up for our principles and not sell them for the, for the benefit of personal flattery. We've talked about Ukraine and Vladimir Putin. Oh I do my want to talk God, she got a last that word. In, in the first hour wow. of this debate. Oh, wait. I, I want to move on to Afghanistan. Wait, oh. Mark said Trump did the most I'm sorry, my bad, just kidding. Ever just kidding. My bad, just kidding. Just kidding. Mike, just kidding. countries at the time. <laughs> my bad. To pay up. He said, I've never seen. He's the head of NATO. He said, I've never seen. For years, we were paying almost all of NATO. This is we not responsive to anything, by, by the way. nations, both on trade and on NATO. But let's understand how we got to where we are. Is she going to avoid Trump, the, when he was president. Oh, she's going to avoid the plot immediately. One of the weakest deals you can imagine. He calls himself a deal maker. Even his national security advisor Ooh. said it was a weak, terrible deal. And weak. here's how it went down. Weak deal. He bypassed the Afghan government. True. He negotiated directly with, with a Taliban. terrorist organization yep. called the Taliban. He did. The negotiation involved the Taliban getting 5,000 terrorists, Taliban terrorists, released. From prison. And get this. No, and get land, this. too. And... The president at the time invited the Taliban to Camp David, a place of storied significance <laughs> I didn't for even us know as that. Americans, a place where <laughs> we true. honor the importance of American diplomacy, where we invite and receive respected world leaders. It's true. And that's pretty this funny if that's true. <laughs> former president, as president, invited them to Camp David, because he does not again appreciate the role and responsibility oh, no. of the President oh, of the United States to be Commander in Chief with a level of respect. And this gets back to the point of how he has consistently disparaged and demeaned members of our military, fallen soldiers, and the work that we must do to uphold Hitting on the those media memes and the respect of the United States of America around the world. Vice President Harris, thank you. Wait, what? And Abdul is the head of the Taliban. He is still the head of the Taliban. And I told Abdul, don't do it anymore. You do it anymore. You're going to have problems. And he said, why do you send me a picture of my house? I said, you're going to have to figure that out, Abdul. And for 18 months, we had nobody killed. We did have an agreement negotiated by Mike Pompeo. It was a very good agreement. The is it even true? It is it good. Abdul? Is that it even was, the guy's name? We I'm just looking this we up. We would have been out faster than them, but we wouldn't have lost the soldiers. We wouldn't have left many Americans behind, and we wouldn't have left. We wouldn't have left eighty-five billion dollars worth of brand new, beautiful military Kibatala equipment behind. And just as to Kunzada? finish, they, Where, who is this Abdul the guy? Little, who the fuck? The agreement the, said you have to do Abdul? this, 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 this. Oh wait, this guy? And they didn't do First it. First deputy they prime minister for economic affairs. Was Taliban country. diplomat. Mr. President, he you thinks that this said guy was the President leader Harris of the Cole. Taliban? I didn't know she was black okay. until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black and now she wants to be known as black. I want to ask a bigger picture question here tonight. Why do you believe it's appropriate to weigh in on the racial identity of your opponent? I don't, and I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what she is. I don't care. Uh, you make a big deal out of something, I couldn't care less. Whatever she wants to be is okay with me. <laughs> But those were your words. So I'm I don't asking. know. I don't know. I mean, all I can say is I read. They're so shameless. They're so shameless. It's such a good strategy, right? I, I don't know. I didn't say. Did I say? It? I don't know. I don't know. What my word? I don't know. I don't know. Whatever she wants to be is okay. It's, such with a, it's me. so shameless. But those were your words. So I'm I asking. Don't know. I, don't know. I don't know. I mean, all I can say is I read where she was not black that she put out, and I'll say that. And then I read that she was black. <laughs> And that's okay. Either one was okay with me. That's up to her. That's Vice, up to her. Vice President Harris, your thoughts on this? I think it's, I mean, honestly, I think it's a, a tragedy that we have um, someone who <gasps> wants to be president. Is she going to do that? has consistently oh, over the course my of God. his career. I thought we were going the senile route. I thought she was just a tragedy that he, this old man is lost up here. Never mind. Okay. She's got to be more serious. Attempted to use race to divide the American people. You know, I do believe that the vast majority majority of us know that we have so much more in common than what separates us and we don't want this kind of approach that is just constantly trying to divide oh, this, us and this answer is race. so sep uh it's so serious Donald Trump started he was a a, a a land he owned land he owned buildings and he, he was investigated because he refused to rent 
property to black families. It's probably going to be serious. Let's remember, this is the same individual probably. who took out a full-page ad in the New York Times Ooh, calling New York for the Central execution Park five? of five young black and Latino boys who were innocent, the Central Park Five, took out a full-page ad calling for their execution. This is the same individual who spread birther lies about the first black president of the United True. States. And me. And I think the American people want better than that. Want better than this. You ask him, do you want still think Obama is from Kenya? Country. She should ask that at we the see end. In each other he won't answer, but friend. it'd be we funny to hear him not answer. We see in each other a neighbor. We don't want a leader who is constantly trying to have Americans point their fingers at each other. Vice President Harris, thank you. Lindsay? President Trump, this is now your third time... No, sorry, I need the last this word again. This is the most divisive presidency in the history of our country. Really? There's Biden never is? There's never anything like it. They're Biden destroying is? destroying our country. And they come up with things like what she just said. Going back many, many years, when a lot of people, including Mayor Bloomberg, agreed with me on the Central Park Five, they admitted, they said, they pled guilty. And I said, well, if they pled guilty, they badly hurt a person, killed a person, ultimately. And if they pled guilty, then they pled, we're not guilty. But this is a person <laughs> that has to stretch back years, 40, 50 years ago, because there's nothing now. I built one of the greatest economies in the history of the world, and I'm going to build it again. It's going to be bigger, better, and stronger. <laughs> but they're destroying our economy. They have no idea what a good economy is. Bigger, Their better, oil policies, every stronger. single policy. And remember this, she is Biden. You know, she's trying to get away from Biden. I don't know the gentleman, she says. She is Biden. The worst inflation we've ever had. A horrible economy because inflation has made it so bad. Mr. And she President, can't get away with that. Thank you. Your time is up. Uh, I want to respond to that, though. I want to just oh, my God. Briefly. She's taking a... Clearly, I am not Joe Biden. <laughs> and I am certainly <laughs> not job. Donald Trump. And what I do offer is a new generation of leadership for our country. One who New believes generation. Okay, kind in of. what is possible. One joke. who brings a sense of optimism one age joke. about what we can do instead of always disparaging the American people. True. I believe in what we can do to strengthen our small businesses, which is why I have a plan. Let's talk about our plans and, th and let's compare the plans. I have a plan. To give startup businesses $50,000 tax deduction, to pursue their ambitions, their innovation, their ideas, their hard work. I have a plan, $6,000 for tax young credit. families for the first year of your child's life okay. to help you in that most critical stage of your child's development. I have a plan that is about allowing people to be able to pursue what has been fleeting in terms of the American dream by offering a help with down payment of $25,000 down payment assistance for, for first time home I think she buyers. meant to bring that in earlier. That's Unless the kind I of conversation I believe, David, that people really want tonight as opposed to a conversation that is constantly about belittling and name calling and immigrants Let's eating dogs. Vice President Harris, forward. thank you. Let's turn to policy. President Let's Trump, turn back we to have policy. to move on. To President Trump. Trump. Let's turn to policy, please. To defund the police. She has a... Oh, wait. Is this the one where I said Kamala took one final word? Oh, I have to delete this one. So she's not going to get the final word on this then, right? ...plan to confiscate everybody's gun. President Trump, she we has do a have plan to, to not operations. allow fracking in Pennsylvania or anywhere else. Okay, That's thanks, what her President. plan is until just recently. I, I just need to... President, 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 no, President Trump... The president has said no, something sorry. twice yep. that I need to respond yep. to. Yes, okay. respond. 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 Fight. Said, Fight for it. Make them cut you off. Oh, my God. Come on. This is unironically sexism? Uh, No. What it is is, remember... Remember what's happening, okay? One person walks into a room fully showered. They smell good. The other person walks in smelling like shit. And because you don't want to be appear biased, you've got to pretend that both of them smell the same. That's what it's like being on stage with a conservative. And we are working on things. Every time. We're going to do it and we're going to replace it. But it's the only way they can appear impartial. We're looking at different plans. If we can come up with a plan that's going to cost our people, our population, less money and be better health care than Obamacare, then I would absolutely do it. But until then, I'd run it as good as it can be run. So what does that yes, mean? You still do not have a plan. I have concepts of a plan. <laughs> what? Can you imagine Biden saying, uh, I have concepts of a plan? It would. Can you imagine if Biden said this, every left-wing media pundit would be making fun of him for the next two weeks? Better and less expensive. Oh, my and God. And concepts and options we, we have to do that. And you'll be hearing about it in the not-too-distant future. <laughs> Vice President Harrison, <laughs> you came to a debate with no plans?
Access to health care should be a right and not just a privilege of those who can afford it. And the plan has to be to strengthen the Affordable Care Act, not get rid of it, pass this prologue in terms you. of where Donald Trump stands on that. I want to move to an Sorry. issue that's important Excuse me. for a lot made of... made a mistake. <laughs> At number one, John McCain fought Obamacare for 10 years, but it wasn't only him. I thought he was going to say if you made a mistake, <laughs> McCain fought the Vietnamese, he deserved to be... I thought he was going to... I thought he was about to do some unhinged shit. That would have been the funniest answer of the night. It were all of the Democrats that kept it going. <laughs> and you know what? We can do much better than Obamacare. Much less money. But she won't improve private insurance for people. Private medical insurance. That's another thing she doesn't want to get. Bring up the state privately lines? for insurance that have worked hard and made money and they want to have private. She wants everybody to be on government insurance where you wait six months for an operation that you need immediately. President Trump, thank you. We have another issue. She just we makes shit up. For she Americans should be able to respond to that. Money. He's just making shit up. They get all this money from Ukraine. They get all this <laughs> what money that from all China? of these different countries. What the and fuck? then you wonder why is he so what loyal is he talking to this about? one, that one, Ukraine, China? Why is he? Why did he get three and a half million dollars from the mayor of Moscow's wife? Why did he get, why did she pay him three and a half million dollars? This is a crooked administration. Crooked. And they're selling uh -oh. our country down the tubes. The words President are coming. Trump, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Trump. Thank we'll thank be right you. back with closing statements from what both an of amazing answer. historic night. This ABC News president. My God, let's, we got we to roll back the tape on that one. I'm sorry, that was just an amazing. Thank you. What was up? Auto plants, not closing what was the question them here? like happened Hold under on. Donald Trump. Vice President Harris, thank you. It didn't happen under Donald Trump. Let me just tell you, they lost 10,000 manufacturing, okay, manufacturing jobs, jobs this last month. It's going, they're all leaving. Okay, they're all uh, leaving. They're building big auto plants in Mexico. Okay. In many cases, owned by China. They're building these building massive big plants, plants in and Mexico. They think they're going to sell their China. cars into the United States because of these people. What they have given to China is unbelievable. But we're not going to let in Mexico, that. We'll put China tariffs and on those cars so they we're can't come into our everything. country. Because Are you going to put tariffs? You're talking about Mexico. No one's going to bring up, what did NAFTA get replaced by? The U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade agreement? The USMCA, that was your agreement that you were so proud of. You were so happy. Are you going to renege on that agreement? Are you going back on that one? You're going to start tariffing? Are you even allowed to put tariffs with that agreement in place? Was that the whole point of negotiating these things? They will kill the United Auto Workers and any auto worker, whether it's in Detroit or South Carolina or any other place. What they've done to business and manufacturing in this country is horrible. We have nothing because they, they refuse. You know... Biden doesn't go after people because supposedly China paid him millions of dollars. He's afraid to do it between him and his son. They get all this money from Ukraine. They get all this money from all of these different okay. countries. And then you wonder, why is he so loyal to this one, that one, Ukraine, China? Why is he? Why did he get three and a half million dollars from the mayor of Moscow's wife? Why did he get? Why did she pay him three and a half million dollars? This is a crooked administration. The and mayor of Moscow's our wife. Country down the tubes. President Trump, thank you. <laughs> what the? F <laughs> what? Moderator, you have one minute. Donald Trump. So we moved to LA. My father gets a job at the Palm Restaurant. My uncle Junior works there, who was a Jehovah's Witness, believe it or not. He went from Catholic to Jehovah. So basically, my grandmother wanted us all to switch from Catholic to Jehovah. You know, meanwhile, we're from Harlem. We're, my father's doing coke. You know, my mother thinks she's Aunt Margaret. She's teasing the hair with a bottle of vodka. You know, so dysfunctional, cross-addicted family, still cooking pasta on Sundays. Um, and, uh, and the meatballs, they, they wind up being burnt. Like, you know, it just got so dysfunctional. It got pretty bad. So we moved to L. <laughs> Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Yeah, that's about right. Trump has spoken for 41 minutes. Harris has spoken for 35 minutes and 36 seconds. Okay. Time attacking opponent. Kamala has more time attacking her opponent because Trump spends all of his time attacking Biden. Oh, okay, true, maybe, yeah. Do you notice that Trump never refers to Kamala by name? Oh, maybe, sure. The I have a concept of a plan was maybe the worst blunder I've seen. That I have a concept of a plan is pretty funny. 
Um, that was a pretty good line. That was f***ing hilarious. Jesus Christ. I, I like, I don't know how much anyone will care. I like transgender operations on illegal aliens in prisons. <laughs> That's, man, we got a lot of, we got a lot of talking points in that one line. Pennsylvania. Yeah. Oh, there he goes. Walks off. I think in her first answer, in her very opening, I think she missed her homes and housing, that uh, 25K thing. I like how all of the talking points have just turned into like money giving. But hey, you know what? It's At least there's like an actual plan. Um, at least there's something, right? She does uh, identifies a problem and then says what they want to do for it. So homes and housing, 25K, child tax credit, 6K, small businesses, 50K, tax deduction. At least we got like, I guess, policies, like problems paired with policies. I don't know if the American people give a f She attacked in this answer too. Yeah, man, Donald Trump just... How do you rate their performances? I think they did fine. I think this, <laughs> there's no analyzing this. This is all rhetoric at this point. I think this performance was fine. The only thing she needs to do is, um, the only thing she needs to do is just sound a little bit more normal. And I think in contrast, I think that that will, I think that'll sell it even harder. Um, I said this, uh, I guess on my kick stream, but sometimes I feel like, uh, I feel like when Kamala is talking, it feels like she's always trying to like, be like quote all of the year. Hey, what's up? Hey. How about, how about how you feel about this? I, bro, I can't listen to this, these ABC people. They're, they're insane. These ABC, they're crazy. Okay. Well, what's up? What do you well, want? I, 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 I want to listen to you take about, about the whole thing instead of listening to these guys take it instead. So I can, you, I can have your commentary instead. Sure. Well, what do you give me a question? I'll answer the best of my ability. Well, I, okay. Well, but give me first impression then. Act like you're, you're the guys that are on camera and they're talking on ABC, like the people that are like giving like post thing uh, review or whatever. Uh, well, the impressions are, okay, so it's a debate that's being broadcast to the American people. I think that coming into this, I think that there, in some ways, there's a high expectation on Kamala and there are, because Biden's last performance was so bad and the standards we have for democratic performers are, are relatively high. There's a lot of pressure on her not to mess up or fuck up. Um, and then on Trump, I think that because he's coming in and Kamala's had kind of like all of the recent media coverage and everybody's still kind of like coming off of her uh, getting the nomination and everything, people are kind of like looking at Trump to do something. So I feel like the the wins were in Trump's favor to like have a moment here if Kamala could screw up or mess up. Like she hasn't really been on a, like in a debate like this running for president yet. So Trump's kind of had the experience. Kamala doesn't have the experience as much. And Donald Trump is used to like the zingers and all that. Uh, I, I feel like... I feel like coming into this, I feel like Donald Trump should have done better, but he's just so unhinged. <laughs> he kind of fucked it all up. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, with the tangents and the fucking and and, and the wild rides and and then like 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 the jokes and whatever, it didn't it didn't hit like normal. It was gonna. I, I think the issue is that Donald Trump before wasn't really doing well. Biden was just doing really bad, and now that he's standing next to a competent human being, he needs something more than like the schizoid rambles of just absolutely schizophrenic talking about dogs being eaten and immigration and just unhinged insane shit i, I don't know it's just like it's just it just sounds really kind of crazy i think yeah yeah yeah. i mean because fucking Biden would get lost in the sauce right and we know what to say or whatever right is a playing in his favor but this time there's an actual being that's like can compute new information and like new rambles whatever with like a uh, head on our shoulders so yeah i, I feel something about that um how do you feel about the hosts? Um, it's I'm doing my best to fight back against the media on this, but something that we need to deprogram and then reprogram in our minds is we've allowed conservatives to get away with so much for so long that we it's going to feel bad being mean to them. But I, I, conservatives are kind of like children in stores that are stealing candy bars. Like at some point, you just got to like smack the candy bar to their hand and tell them like, "Hey, you need to fuck off with this." The problem is, I think people are trying so hard to be perceived as unbiased they're still allowing you know donald trump to show up in, in a shit-filled diaper and, and tell him that he smells okay the moderators need to stop letting him he's taking the last word on every single question that's bullshit why he's literally stealing every single last word there was one where i was finally like oh my god kamala got the last word on this good job and then he went for the last last word even after she was trying to get the last word um sure. they need to make him actually answer questions donald trump i don't know if you noticed donald trump did not answer a single question True. for the entire said, said, yeah, debate that, yeah. not even one question did he answer and he True. didn't expand on or speak about a single policy point 
except for tariffs, which he actually doesn't understand. He doesn't know what a tariff is. Um, so I, yeah, I don't know. I wish that, I but I think that the I think the moderators just don't want to hold him accountable because people are going to say that they're being biased. So yeah. Um. So I, I that line that, right? said, there are so many things that Donald Trump says that if Biden would have said it, it would be the only thing the media would be talking about left and right for the next three days. If Biden would have said, I don't have a plan. I have a concept of a plan, Jack. That would have been the next three days we would be hearing about that Biden gaffe. But because the, because the bar is in hell for conservatives and it's basically like like any time you, you listen to a conservative speak, it's like you're listening to the open, opening ceremony of, of like the mentally special Olympics. Like that's what it's like listening to conservatives talk. The standards are so low as long as he doesn't actually shit himself on stage. It's OK. And like everybody claps. All the Republicans are like happy and cheering him on. But like his answers are incoherent, like bumbling nonsense. It's insane how he answers questions. Oh, I should agree with that. Yeah. So I thought one of the solutions to become uh, as unbiased is um, do it to both do it do it to both candidates, right? If they if they do it to both, I think that's perfectly fine, right? The only, the only problem is that um, when when they were correcting, they were correcting him um, like a little bit, right? And I wish they kind of did it like a lot more on uh for both does that make sense and i, I actually did a pretty bad job overall and mm -hmm. that was odd yeah one thing that people need to get over um and it's especially it's gone deep into like the conservative brain rot today but the, like in a normal circumstance if a normal person walks into a room and there's 20 people in one corner and there's one guy in the other and you look and you're like what's going on here and the 20 people all say Wow, that guy in the corner is like a rapist serial killer, okay? Just so you know. In a normal world, you go, okay, well, if everybody's saying that, I'm going to stay away from that guy. But like in the conservative world, they all look at that guy and like, oh, wow, sounds like there's some inconvenient truths this guy's spewing that you guys don't want to hear anything about. Like, it's, it's, it's unhinged how much favor Republicans get when it comes to these types of events. Like, the moderators are supposed to sit there and listen to Donald Trump say something like, yes, uh, transgender surgeries are being performed on illegal immigrants in our prisons by Kamala Harris as they come out of insane asylums, and then they're eating the dogs. And the moderators are supposed to be like, thank you, Mr. President, for that answer. And then go on to Kamala Harris and then ask her a serious question. Like, that's that's what these debates are. It's insane. It's unhinged. Uh, yeah, well, even even though I agree with you, it's their fault for how they format it and how how they deal with it, right? Like they corner themselves because of their behavior and because their lack of spine in uh, debate formatting. It's it's absolutely their fault. Like th that's that's what that's why I don't like it. Yeah, maybe I get. They, I mean, they said they were going to mute the mics, but apparently it was exactly. just muted unless exactly. they start talking and then they unmute them. <laughs> like, what's the point? Yeah, that's yeah. what I was saying. It is that is that. Um, at that point, they're letting them both break the rules, right? And it's whoever can break the most rules that gets that upper hand. That's well, just, that, except that's, that's, that's not true because there was one How's time. There was one time where Kamala tried really hard to get the last word in one for one time on one answer, and the moderators like actually insanely shut her down. She said Donald Trump lied about me twice, and she was trying to get in to get something, and they actually completely shut it down and then forced them to go on to the question, and she had to wait for the question for her to respond. Um, yeah, it's insane. Well, like, if you look I'm, at the talking I mean, time for the debate, I think Trump got, like, seven or eight more minutes of talking time. Like, there's a reason why. And why is that? Because they let him get the last word on every single question. On literally every single question, he had the last word. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like I said, the, the, the format sucks. I, 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 if, if the format is what it is, then it stops when the minute stops. If it's two minutes, when the minute stops, it stops. Mm -hmm. Right? They have, they have no integrity when it comes down to, like, following their own rules. I, which I think why it's, it's so braindead. It's why it's why I don't like when they they let her speak when it's not time uh, uh, when her mic is muted and then and then the the production people like s somehow make her mic like uh, like kick back into gears a little bit like you, you hear it's like um, like reactivating or whatever and it's like why just just tell her and him to shut the fuck up when somebody is speaking. I don't, like, I don't know happen? when the I'm not sure what we're talking about here, but I, when the mic was kicking back in for her. Ah uh, nah, like you know you, you know when somebody responds something mm -hmm. right. Um, and it, it's not like organized talk, right? It's like, um, let's say they ask a question yeah. and then somebody answers and then, the, um, the other person starts talking or whatever, right? as it, and it becomes the, the, the official response. They, they make her, they make, they activate their mic or whatever, right? Like it becomes, that, that's a response and, and then they do that. And it, it, it felt like, um, at one I think point, it was just coming. No, it was just her talking, coming through, probably, um, coming through Trump's mic. 
Can they be uh, from from his mic? You think? Uh, yeah, then I that's, think you can all, hear you can like hear them in the background. Shit, but then once then, they start then, talking, then, then they turn the mic off. That's just poor production. Then that's, that's still dog shit, though. That, that's uh, that's even worse than it. How 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 is the mic that they're literally in front of their face capturing what the, the opponent's saying? Fucking five meters away. Like, what, what do you mean? Just, they're microphone. You you're a streamer. You're microphones. They you can catch things from across the stage. It's not that hard. <laughs> it's a microphone. What do you, that's what they do. They capture sound. Wait, are you fucking brain dead, brother? Brother, brother. Performers that uh, uh, at concerts they sing in the mic, can you hear the crowd, and it's twenty five times closer uh, into, into into the sound, and you can you can hear the crowd. What the fuck you talking about? You, you 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 can make the mics actually work properly to where you don't fucking hear uh, the noise in the room. What? Do we want to? Do you want to do an audio aids right now? <laughs> you can have types of so like at a at a at a, at a concert a. At a concert, a singer's probably singing into like a super di- directional um, dynamic microphone, like a, like an SM57 or something, right? It's going to be a microphone. You don't, so you don't think it's important for them to actually set up the seven properly so that they have that for the fucking candidates? On, no, on these the guys are using like mics on stands or like lapel mics or shit. These things are way less directional because it, because in, in these cases, if a candidate moves their he- head or something or they speak in a different direction, they're going to lose all the audio completely. In events like these, you're never having such a highly directional microphone. You're always going to be using stuff that captures like a wider uh, pattern of sound, of course. Mm. I can either give that some some form of credibility, but sometimes they're they're at a they're they're literally at a uh, on a fucking stand with the thing in right in their face. I, I feel yeah, like I know, but like I mean, if you've ever done shows phones. or watched streamers or seen po- like retards don't speak in a mic well, right? They always move around, and then you can't fucking hear anything they're saying because they moved off the microphone. It's like okay, yeah. It, it to I mean, I was just saying like um, I don't like that format of like. Uh, if it's organized, okay, your turn, your turn, your turn. It shouldn't be organic, as in, like, if, if this guy wants to start speaking, oh, okay, sure, then that's that's No, their, I agree with you. Once the questions rebuttal. are over, that's it bullshit. should be over. I agree with you. Yeah. Once it's over, it should be over. But Trump was able to fight and get the last word on every single question that was brought up tonight, which was insane. Yeah, that's stupid. Yeah. I think, I think that's fucking stupid. Um... Yeah, I I think lay people getting get away with lies is brain dead. Like if something is objectively untrue, they I don't think they, they, they should just fucking um like like slightly brush over it. And just, like, you can't do that. On. You can't fact check anymore because conservatives don't believe. Conservatives will tell you that every single fact check website is liberal biased. Conservatives will say that. Conservatives will say I don't trust Snopes. That bi- I don't trust Politifact. That's biased. I don't trust uh, CNN or Reuters or AP fact check. Those are all biased. All of those are liberal biased media. No, they don't trust any fact checking website ever. So you can't do any fact check anymore. And if you start fact checking, they'll say that you're being biased. There's already people today, uh, I see some of them in, in across all of these chats right now, there are already people saying, and I've seen every single conservative, because they all get their orders like beamed into them through fucking Elon Musk's Starlink. They all get the same talking points, but they're like, oh, 3v1 moderators, oh, 3v1 moderators. Because anytime you try to hold Trump even moderately accountable for anything he fucking says, right, he immediately gets, uh, uh, you immediately get accused of being biased. Like, Trump doesn't have to answer any question ever. He didn't, again, I, I challenge any conservative, what is a single policy that Donald Trump talked about tonight? He said he was going to make the economy, did he say better, stronger, faster? He's going to make it gr- greater than, like, <laughs> he, he speaks like a retard. He actually speaks like he's four years old. Not even, I'm sorry. He speaks like a retarded 10-year-old. That my, That's what I meant to say. Jesus. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, debates are a disaster. I think like they should be, like, they should be incredibly strict. Just be incredibly strict all, all the way through. That's, it, 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 it is what it is. And if you're going to let people get away with shit, then let them get away with everything, yeah. Like, like you can't like do this like pick and choose. One thing is, it's gonna look like bias always. Public, public, or public is branded. They won't be able to figure it out. Sure. I just, I wish they would like make the people answer the questions, but you know. I mean, they tried, right? So they tried at the beginning, and they completely gave up on him. I don't know if you noticed that. Yeah, on the I first know. question, yeah, they they asked three times, and once he didn't, he still didn't do anything. Yet. They probably didn't want to be like doing that like four times per question, yeah, and they stopped bias, pressing yeah. him ever. That was it. It was done. Well, that's just odd. Uh, in ter- in terms of looks, uh, like uh, who do you think like like wins this in in optics? Mm. I feel like um, I feel like Kamala didn't make any huge mistakes. I feel like that Trump quote. I feel like the standout quote of the night was the. Trump saying, I have concepts of a plan was probably yeah, one of the Yeah, that stupidest. made him look very weak. Yeah, it made him look like he, like, because he's not currently president, he's not, like, actively looking for, for real solutions. He's just saying that he will once he gets there. 
Mm. I also think that um, Republicans need to do every fucking thing they can to stay the fuck away from the abortion topic. It is the worst topic. Kamala's Who? She, abortion. You have to stay the fuck away from abortion. Um, Kamala's a woman. Uh, the, the Democrats are, are, are pro-choice. Like, it's just so easy that if you want to get into the abortion topic for Kamala to just start mining the fuck out of that, she will form the fuck out of you trying to talk about making abortion illegal. It's just such a, it's such a loser topic for him to, like, Republicans need to drop that as quickly as possible, like, run from those conversations as quickly as possible, in my opinion. I just think it's like, because it's like one of the few things that can truly energize the voter base and keep them mad as fuck for a long time because nobody fucking forgets about abortion because there's always people, like, getting pregnant around you, all the, like, everywhere. Like, people actually see the effects of abortion and, and miscarriages and early pregnancies. People see that all the time. It's not like the fucking illegal immigrant caravans where people only know about them when Fox oh, News yeah, decides yeah. to highlight them uh, or, or trans surgeries for illegal immigrants in fucking prisons, right? Where the only time anybody ever even fucking knows about these things when Donald Trump is schizoid ranting about it on some media network, yeah. Yeah, I guess, I, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> That's about it. That's that's that's, 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 that's a good review. I, I don't think I, I disagree with anything you said. Um, I I thought her kind of like appeal to like emotion over it was kind of annoying at times, but because if she did it once or twice, I I think it's good to uh, make it like relatable and like I know your struggle. But I think kind of like like emotion baiting a bunch of times. I I don't know why I kind of got over it. Um. Yeah. I mean, I, you have to. I guess. Right. Like, she has to figure yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. At one point, you have to touch on emotion for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, Donald does the same thing when it comes to like war, or whatever. He does bad emotion as well. Just a different type of emotion, like fear. When he's like this actual like fucking fear mongering, Andy. It is really strange that like, I, I, and I, I don't know. Maybe they just don't notice it, or maybe we don't care. But like. If you watch a movie and there's always like the really bad dictator guy that takes over in the beginning, like he sounds like Donald Trump. <laughs> like everything is horrible. Everything is failing. Like everything is being uh, destroyed. True. We need to go. B- this is destroyed. We need to rebuild. Everything is completely fucked right now. The world is fucking falling. <laughs> there's fucking nuclear weapons. They got fucking nukes. And we're on the verge of fucking World War Three. Everybody's fucking true. crazy. Like it's like, Jesus Christ. Calm the fuck down, dude. That's yeah, true. I'm a f- I'm a my fear monger. And fear monger shit. But yeah. yeah, yeah. But it, I'm just being. I'm just. Uh, I'm just chilling, just spinning, and fucking. I uh, was listening to this debate. I thought. I thought it was always interesting, entertaining, though. Um. Yeah. It was entertaining. Yeah. Kamala needs to. Uh. She's doing a good job. I probably want it more than she should be, but I think she needs to do more personal <laughs> attacks on Trump because it absolutely triggers the ever living fuck out of him. When she called his plan like weak, when she said that uh, Putin would eat him for lunch. Um. Things like that oh, yeah, yeah. sincerely rattle the fuck out of him. And it's so funny. As soon as she mentioned that uh, small crowd size thing, he spent like half the next answer. He even went back uh, to it at yeah. the end. That's why I said he got baited when he said when he, when Yeah, he said talking that. about the small crowd size, he got so uh, yeah. he fucking He got baited like mad. twice today. He keeps getting baited. Yeah. He just needs to like, she needs to like throw random things at that. After like being serious with all the other serious answers. She also needs to like, it's okay to have, um, it's okay to have profound statements and to have like, quirky one-liners or quippy one-liners i think that's good but she also needs to talk like a normal person sometimes she speaks too much like she's always trying to have like a hallmark card quote or something or she's always yeah, trying to say something true, yeah. yeah she needs to bring it down a like little. in a movie or some shit yeah yeah just speak like a normal person you're fine you're next to trump like just fucking chill and speak like a normal fucking person you're okay yep mm-hmm. the racism question and which one i don't remember that oh yeah the thing was she uh um... We also got apparently well, Taylor Swift just came out and endorsed Kamala as well. Oh. Anyway, anything else? It's my line, motherfucker.